welcome to biology. My name is Rebecca Davis and I've been teaching biology for 23 years. I've also marked the HSC exam for the last 15 years and last year I was a judge on the paper so I have a really good idea of what the examiners are looking for. My goal today is for you to get some inside information if you like or strategies to help you with your exam and some techniques, the way you answer questions and things like that. Not so much content, there's a lot of content in biology, a lot of facts, a lot of definitions that you have to know, but we don't have time for that today, so we'll just touch on a few techniques. So in your biology course, you would all have studied four modules or four topics. All of you would have done three main topics in the core, and the fourth one is an option, so different schools do different options. In the state, about 75% of students study communication, and the next most popular is genetics, the code broken. Remember, when you go into the exam, there's about 16,000 other students doing biology, and that's a good thing, because you're going to be compared with a really large group. Make sure you remember that all of those four are worth equal marks, so don't leave your option till the end and think, oh, it's still worth 25% and it needs equal attention. First thing you need to do in biology is memorize thousands of facts. It's not the easy science that lots of people think it is, but that's only half of it. So if you memorized every single fact in this textbook, you still might only get 50% for your exam because the other 50% comes down to your technique in the exam. You do have to remember a lot though, and I recommend that you write things in your own words. And by that I mean by hand, which is a bit old fashioned for some people. I know that you all love your laptops and you love technology, but I actually think that if you write it by hand, it stays in your brain better. That's my hypothesis. Also, you have to write a three hour paper. And I know quite a few students who were so used to typing that their hand muscles were weak and they really struggled with three hours. So please try the old fashioned way, writing by hand. There's a lot of information in your textbook, but you really need to look at the syllabus, which is on the Board of Studies website, because they have what's called dot points and they are all the things that you have to know for the paper. So you need to look up that syllabus because it tells you, it's like a checklist, what you need to know. I also like to recommend to my students to use little cards this small, I call them little summary cards or filing cards, because your notes for biology are going to be this thick after two years. You cannot memorise all of those facts. So on one card, I'll show you an example, if say you had 10 pages of notes on enzymes, you can't remember all of that. But what I would do is make a card and come down just to the main points only. So on my little card, I would think, what do I have to know? What I have to know is on the syllabus. So you would need to know what the role is of enzymes. You need to know that they speed up the rate of reaction. If you know the scientific term for that, that's really good. And you can say they act as a catalyst. You also need to know the structure of enzymes, so you would say they are made of protein. Something else you might talk about is the way they act. There are two models that you need to know from maintaining a balance. One is called lock and key, and that's really easy to remember, it's like Lego. So if this yellow part here is an enzyme, it could be amylase in my saliva, and this is called the substrate. It means the substance it acts on. The lock and key model suggests that they can only fit together. So this amylase in my saliva, if I just ate some bread at lunchtime or crackers, it will connect only to the starch and it will break it up into simpler molecules like glucose. So that's the lock and key model. There's a more modern or more recent model that they've talked about. It's called induced fit. We're going to write that on our card. 
And that proposes the enzyme can actually change shape a little bit. It's more plastic. And like this Play-Doh here, that it can mould slightly to fit onto the substrate. So there are two models and you need to know them in your maintaining a balance. So on my card, I might write, there are two models, block and key, think about Lego or induced fit. The word induced means forced to. And um, if you think about that, if someone's pregnant and they're overdue two weeks, they are induced, the baby is induced, they're given hormones and it forces the childbirth to happen. So it just means it's forced. And something else you might mention are factors that affect the enzyme activity. So you've done three experiments, you should have done them, they're called first-hand investigations. One would have been on pH, one would have been on temperature, and one would have been on concentration. So I've brought my notes down to a simple card and that should help you when you're memorising things.